60 style asymmetric show car would be this hard. Let's get to the workshop. custom works we're going to be looking at the 60s truck again and we're going to be doing some more that front headlight bezel which is which has become more of a job than than you would first think and also it's going to be a top tip coming up later in the program first let's have a look how that headlight bezel came along this essentially is just a trim piece but it's still got to be strong don't want no cracks nothing like that happening so over these edges, I've got very little sort of bond here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some fiberglass tissue around these edges. Now, this is not like your core strand mat. It's really thin, tears really easy, and it's for getting details in molds, but it will fold round an edge pretty clean. We don't want with like core strand mat, it'll go round an edge, but it'll have a bulge and then go round, and then you grind that bulge off, and then you're not really connecting anything. So with this, molds to the shape a lot better so this stuff and again always using a bit of um, contact adhesive um, yeah you can get a really sharp sort of crisp corner and of course that's only made sharper and more crisp when you go over with the resin but see there that's gone over there I'll probably I'll have to put a bit more on there to wrap around there but as long as I've got a coat of this round there because what I'll do I will only lightly sand this and then I'll go over with a filler so that I don't sand through this like straight the way I put it on, I sand through it, I'll skim it with filler first and get that filler smooth over it. Obviously I'll nib the like the, the little lumps and bumps off it, but essentially that's it. So I want to get this covered, get it resined up, then we can fill it and trial fit it on the car and just see how it interacts with all the other bits and bobs. There's a lot going on on that front end. <laughs> dry now a lot of drips on the back this is a really rough bit of fiberglass in and this sort of a uh, sort of milky stuff you can see what I've done is um, just on the last coat of resin on this I mixed in some of this sort of micro bowl stuff SP glass bubbles and what that does that sort of acts like an aggregate in cement and it keys everything together yeah I've gone over with a coat of that so that should be nice and sandable but still as strong as fiberglass a little bit stronger than filler so I'll sand this up get some filler on it and then we can try it on the car right then, so after a lot of sanding probably more sanding than I thought actually I have the headlights around. Really, it's for a while the headlights around anywhere on earth, I tell you. So, that fits on there. But what I've realised is this has got a bit of a rock to it because it's not quite flat on the back. And I plan to cover this in tape, loads of fill on the back, put it on, trim it back, and all the gap is gone. But in doing this, I thought, well, if I shove that on there, if I shove the bottom back, it makes the top stick out. Oh, that just looks even better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, cover it in filler, 
and then I'm going to pop that on, screw through the bottom. I'm going to leave it canted out at the top because I like it. And I'm building the car, so this is how it's meant to be. <laughs> Something like that. Right, let's get to it. Okay, so I've got that in there, I've pulled it a little bit forward, and then once this is dry, what I'll do is I'll fill all this gap, but only ever up to the tape, and then chunk will prise this off. And I realise I'm using masking tape, and someone sent a comment, and I am going to buy some parcel tape, because of course parcel tape will work a lot better, because it's a lot shinier. So I forget who you are, but whoever wrote that, nice one, I will buy some as soon as I can. Yeah, we stuck this on right now you know there's a bit we didn't film there because um duh, i just wasn't happy with it and i looked at it and i, I sat looking for quite a while i'm i'm really sure that's not good content <laughs> just me staring at the car but this was too thick this is a surround was covering the actual lights it was too heavy so i've cut out a lot from the inside and i've re-glassed in there so it's quite um you know it's all very solid but now i really don't like the shape this radius here kicks way much into this radius here uh, there's there's issues around it there's many issues let's put it that way i'm not dead sure of what to do here but what i do know is if i cut a very thin piece of aluminium and i wrap it round in there the aluminium will probably solve all my problems for me it will in effect show the way to the shape that i need so i've ripped down some very thin aluminium chuck that in there and uh, see if that's got any idea of what to do because at the minute um yeah i don't know okay so i need about you know 30 mil wide strip of aluminium and i could do it with the plasma but i've had a lot of bondo dust and stuff about the minute probably not best with big flamey things welders plasma cutters stuff like that so I'm going to rip this down on the table saw. You know I mean? It's only thin aluminium. It'll be fine. Some table saws might start crying. Um, it's probably not very good for the blade, but it'll cut me a strip nice and quick and we can get on with the job. So let's do it. strip 
aluminium. All I've got to do now is just rough this up so whatever I stick it on there, I'll probably fire a big glass it in, is going to actually stick. And um, a couple of kinks in this as well, which I'll probably straighten out before I put it on. will show me the way and forge the future of the shape of this line so let's have a go I'm just gonna bend it in see where it goes see if I like it if I do I'll bond it in what I'm seeing I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna mitre fix this to the top of here just so that everything stops moving about I like this I like the way this is coming in um, probably pull that over it's looking good so I'm gonna fix some of it better shape and what I've done here I've, I've stuck it in with some mitre fix a bit of filler and I've filled some of the gaps with a bit of P40 like fiberglass compound but I will go round all of this fill it glass over it then fill it again and then I will have the headlights around that I wanted in the first place I think <laughs> So I've got some of this smoothed down and I'm starting to get towards the shape that I want. I've also made all of this flat. I think around here will be smooth. And then the headlight bezel fits over this. And what I've done also is fill between this and the headlight bezel to get a really sharp fitting panel gap because I want between like the gold chrome and the white paint. Not that anyone knows what colour this car's gonna be. Just, just forget I said out there you know, will be really sharp and really nice and I've smoothed this down. Obviously, I've still got to make this whole top of this wing with another pop-up headlight, but we'll get to that. Also this week, I've been mainly looking as well at this light. So this is the uh, the pop-up headlight and at the minute I've got the, like the cover to it and uh, we can see it's a really, really thick piece of fiberglass. And then inside here, here's the mechanism that holds the headlight in and makes the whole thing go up and down. This big lump of filler on here at the minute because I've been floating this to get it to the right sort of level. Um, but I've had to remove it at the minute because we're having to do fill all these little gaps. And there's lots of little gaps around here ready for this mechanism to be lifted out. And then the inside of that box, you know, fully fiberglassed and then top coat finished because you know, that is, it's a wooden box and we need to cover it all up. But this has been very, very technical, but um, I suppose it's worth it, you know, just to drive around in a car with totally illegal headlights that at the push of a button becomes 100% legal. Um, the amount of people will be like, oh, you can't drive that on the road. <laughs> oh, contrasa. Lights go up, boom, amazing. So it's all worth it. Free the squares. Freak the squares, man. That's what you gotta do, freak the squares. Yeah, so this is coming on well, but just things like making the edges of this look good so that when it's up, you know, it doesn't look too sort of ramshackled. There is a lot of work in there, but they are looking, they, I've only done the one. That one is looking really good and it's sort of, it's moving in the right direction. Although when I did just bomb this on and try and open it, the back edge caught and it wouldn't actually fully open. So um, 
there is work to do there but it's moving in the right direction that's the important thing as long as things are moving forward even if it's very slowly then a the project's still good and now it's time for a top ish tip okay so filling my god i do a lot of filling you know there gets to be a point in filling where you're just trying to get a large flat area flat or even on a curve and i found that using a squeegee to put the bondo on works really well and you can you can you can really level out a large area really quick because the squeegee is wide you get less sort of transition marks with the filler spreader even if you use it that way you're always going to get these two ends and look, that's like double that so in my mind that equates to half the work <laughs> now i saw this on instagram you see people doing it and i thought how the hell are they doing that and i realized you got to thin the filler. So I'm using here, which is already pretty thin. I'm using U-Pole Fantastic, but I should imagine any filler would do. My filler spreader board's nice and clean. Everything's nice and clean. I don't want a little bit of grit dragging through your super smooth filler. So what we're going to do is skim the taxi door in another coat of filler. I might not go the whole door. Um, there are some. There's a few low bits on there that I can feel when I run my hand across. And they do need filling. So, first up, I've got some fantastic down there. Then I'm going to put some fiberglass resin in there. A tiny amount of the fiberglass hardener. I, I don't even know if this is, I don't know if the filler would send the fiberglass off or not. I don't know. But just to be on the safe side, some of that's in there. And I shall mix that together. And then add the normal hardener. Now you can see it's really liquid here. This is, you know, you, you can get it really smooth. And definitely on a flat panel, on a roof or a bonnet, you know, you can really lay it on and it, it almost self-levels. I don't know if you ever use like hard it floor self-leveler, but you can get it to be like that. There we go, lovely smooth filler, which goes off pretty quick because it's quite warm today. So let's go over to the 60s truck and put some of this on. And you can see here, you can actually see, you know, these are low spots. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all of this, but on the bottom part of the door. I'm not going on the top, so I want to scrape it up. Don't want to scrape it down because then all that falls off will just fall on the floor. I want to go from the bottom to the top. This would not be the point to go off for a cup of tea or something. You know, you gotta, you gotta crack on with this. Okay then, so the filler is on the car. Okay, and then because it is so thin, the filler, you can just sort of drag it around and get it really level. Obviously, if you push too hard, then the, you know, the squeegee blade will just follow the shape underneath. can see there we get a lot of filler over a really large space really easily and like I say there's less of those sort of transition marks between the filler spreader now that yeah, it's not like glass finished but once it's been sanded we it, I'll be really close and probably just a few bits off of the spreader after sanding that and that will be you know nice and straight I'm ready for the next stage. It's not a primer, paint, more sanding, sanding, more sanding, sanding, more sanding. But anyway, gets it to this um, spot a little bit quicker, thanks to the squeegee. 
And just thing on like cleaning up the squeegee, you can just clean it up with these like hand wipes. They wipe it off really well. Although, uh, yeah, I think this one has had its final day. But I have used it about five times, but I suppose it's meant for soapy water, not Bondo. But luckily, they're only like a pound each. I got loads of these. And once I've sanded the stuff that I put on with the squeegee, there's just a few low spots just to fill in before a final sand, and this door should be pretty damn straight. Okay then, so that's about all we've got time for this week. Other things have been happening this week, not just been working on the 60s truck, doing a lot of gas piping on the meat wagon, and my God, that has been a whole learning curve. Different threads, different pipe sizes, everything with gas, nothing's like 10 mil, everything's like eight mil and weird. And that's been a real learning curve. But when that's done, I'll be showing you all that. So if, if you ever want to put a deep fat fryer in the back of a car, you'll know exactly how to do it and how to keep that super safe. Anyway, that's it for this week. Hope you've already enjoyed it. Join the next week, you know what I mean? Leave a message down below, thumbs up, bell icon, that's another one. Um, I'm sure there's some other things. But the admins are for you. I'll do some more cars. You click the buttons. And I will be back next week. Until then, I'll tell you in my Good night.